Hello folks, uh, this is Andy, Try Andy, and uh, this is a, a first video that I'm doing today, and uh, I just had to do this video right now, and for a particular reason, that's why I'm doing it in my car, um, in the rain. And the reason I decided to do this video now is because I wanted to do a, just a quick summary of the 2018 Boston Marathon, which happened to be completely in the rain, and the wind, and in the cold. Um, the, uh, the 2018 Boston Marathon was my 11th Boston Marathon and 20-something marathon. And uh, I had an opportunity to run it with my lovely wife, who did her third one, third Boston Marathon. And uh, typical for New England weather, it could be anything. I, I've run Boston uh, in beautiful, cool weather and clear skies with a tailwind. I run Boston in 90 degree weather, uh, blazing sun. I've gotten heat stroke. I've gotten frostbite. I've uh, been soaked, and this year didn't disappoint with the weather. At least it was it was terrible. Uh, at the start, it was about 38 degrees. Uh, it was raining uh, with intermittent downpours. It was uh, windy. They had 30 to 50 mile an hour gusts from the east which is uh, not good because we are running west to east, so we had a constant headwind the entire time. And basically, you know, we, had sat, we had a bus near the start area, which was nice to have, but as soon as you left the bus, you were soaked instantly. So uh, usually runners try to keep their feet dry as, for as long as possible, and they take all kinds of precautions to you know, prevent blisters and that kind of thing. Um, there was no way to stay dry. I mean, the puddles and areas were up to your ankles, uh, water flowing down the street. People were trying to wear, people were wearing trash bags on their feet, and they were, most people were wearing uh, ponchos or trash bags around their bodies just to stay dry for a little while. Uh, so, you know, I had a trash bag on for the, you know, for warming up and for sitting at the start line. And but it's before the the gun went off, I took it off because I knew I was gonna be wet, and I might as well just get it over with and just be wet, just not try to fight it or anything. Uh, there were there were people who didn't race. Uh, it was it was that bad that people opted to not run at all. There was there was no deferment, so they would have to requalify to run in Boston next year someplace else. Uh, there were several elites, elite runners who decided not nah, I'm not doing this and bailed. And there were several elite runners who got partway through and said, nah, this is a bad idea of not doing this, and dropped out of the race. Um, us mere mortals, we don't usually have the kind of option to do that. So, um, And there was no way I was going to not run the marathon. I have a streak of, I think, eight now of marathons in a row. Uh, I had a couple of years I missed. That's why I have 11 total marathons and eight consecutive I believe so I just dealt with it and I usually do actually do wet better in uh, bad weather and so does my wife she's done uh, consistent PRs at Shamrock Half Marathon and there's two years there where that was it was miserable there as well so we seem to strive under poor conditions um, so the marathon went off without a, any kind of hitch other than the bad weather and I just tried to hit the paces I know I could hit for the first uh, half of the race and just try to stay relaxed and try <clears throat> to stay within myself and not work too hard and try to keep my legs loose. And like I said, it was very cold, so you, your legs get just feel tight. I wore shorts because I didn't feel like dealing with uh, heavy, wet clothes, and I wore a short sleeve top for the same reason. I just didn't, if, I, if I'm going to be wet, might as well not carry extra weight either. And uh, felt good for uh, 13, 14 miles. Coming on mile 15, I was getting ready for the hills in Newton. And um, my quads were feeling a little bit heavy, which is not a good sign from my experience. And I had a little pain in my right calf. And uh, I made through the first three hills without too much trouble. And even Heartbreak Hill, which is the last one, um, obviously I slowed down. I was trying to not put out too much effort because I wanted to race the end of the race if possible. But I could feel that my quads were definitely getting real heavy and starting to feel that that knife uh, blade going into the quads. And then 
excuse me, and then um, coming in the mile, no, 20 top of, of a Heartbreak Hill, it's mostly downhill with a couple of small rises. And if you're feeling good, that's where you can really, really go fast and just really turn it on. And I've had one year where I was able to do that and I just turned it on and you're basically weaving through the carnage because everybody else usually explodes all over the place and uh, that's where you take off. Well, th this year, uh, it just wasn't gonna happen. My, my quads are hurting really bad. My right calf was hurting really bad and I just, Suffered through it. I went from doing uh, from averaging around 627 pace to uh, a couple times as I said I was in the 730s and eight minute mile pace, but I think I was averaging like 708 to 710 pace. Um, but I, I just really didn't have much left. A friend of ours uh, gave me a bottle of nutrition at the 35k mark, and I took that bottle as much as I could. And uh, it seemed to kick in with like a mile to go. And with a mile to go, I realized I wanted to try to get under 255. Um, and that was just kind of a goal of mine so I could have a better registration spot next year. And I kicked it in with about a, about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile to go. And I was able to basically sprint all the way down uh, Hereford Street and Boylston Street, which is the, the finish line street, and uh, I did whatever I could to get moving, and I got back into the low sixes to try to make up some time, but I ended up with a 255.05, so I missed my, my goal by five seconds, uh, which I'm not too upset with. I was pretty happy with that with that time, and uh, my wife ended up with a 331, which she was not upset with either, given the conditions. Uh, she's running a bit faster than that, but she's already qualified for next year, uh, even without that marathon. So she doesn't have to worry about it, anything really. And so we're both in for next year. But I mean, just on the course, the wind blowing against you, gusts of wind so strong that you basically stopped and were running in place. All the cups full of Gatorade and water getting blown over, tables getting blown over, people's pieces of plastic getting blown over into the course. Um, I mean, so cold that the first couple of miles, my feet were numb because they were cold and it was and wet. And it took a couple of miles to get my feet uh, going. And uh, it never did really feel loose. I didn't. I don't think I sweat at all. I, I, I took in fluids because they told you to. But I don't feel like I was really sweating. I was, it was just so cold and so windy. And it rained. I mean, it was a constant rain. Pretty much just constant rain or heavy, heavy drizzle. And then mixed in with, I mean, torrential downpours. Like you're under a waterfall. I mean, you just, if you, you thought you were wet and then it would pour and you were like, nope, not, now I'm wet. Now I'm soaked. And then it would stop and it would kind of lighten up and things would get a little bit warmer except for the wind. And then it would pour again. You're like, oh well, now I'm frozen again. That's great. Um, it was it was horrible. It was just they they call it the worst weather in marathon history, and uh, I believe it. I mean, I've, I've I've run it when it's been a little bit colder, and definitely a lot warmer. But uh, and I def and run it in the rain, but that was uh, that was really bad. So uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with the time. I qualified for next year, so I can do number twelve next year. And um, looking forward to hopefully better weather, uh, but not hot because I just can't handle the heat. I actually ran faster than this year than last year, and last year was a nice clear day, but just a little warm, and I completely fell apart and ran a 307, I think, or something. But um, anyway, it was a, it was an epic time, and uh, I'm gonna post some pictures, and there might be even a video I can get up of me running through um i think the finish line area or something but uh and i'm sure you've seen on the news and about you know, showing the elites going through and you know desi linden winning being the first woman in 33 years to win it and the women kind of dominated the elite women dominated the race on monday and uh it was just it was just horrible it was just a horrible day and uh it's it's what we call epic it's when I say I'm going to do something epic, it means I'm going to do something really stupid. And in the beginning of the race, my wife knows I say that all the time. 
And I started complaining about the weather. And she said, well, it'll be epic. Yep. It was epic. It was stupid. But we did it. And we survived. It was great. All right. Thank you very much.